Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and can you guess what you're looking at? Well, you can probably tell from the title. This is the supermassive black hole in the middle of our galaxy. And those little fireflies you see in the middle, that are a little bit easier to see if I come closer, are stars orbiting in the central region. Now, this is a little bit accelerated though, so obviously they don't move this fast. But today we're going to be talking about the chance for these stars to have actual planets and possibly even worlds similar to Earth. Let's discuss this and welcome to What The Man. Not so long ago, in early 2000s, the scientists finally identified the region in the night skies where we now are absolutely certain our supermassive black hole is located. This region is known as Sagittarius A star and we're actually zooming in there right now. One of the reasons we know for a fact that there is a supermassive black hole is something you'll see in a few seconds. This is an actual video taken by the European Space Observatory. So right there in the center, you'll notice that some peculiar motion is quite apparent. And this is going to be those stars that I just showed you. They're going to be orbiting around something in the middle. Now, the fastest object that you see orbiting is known as S2. We've talked about this object many times on the channel because it's one of the more well-known stars in this particular region. And this star comes really close to the black hole and moves at something like 2500 kilometers per second when it's that close, about every 16 years. But as you can imagine, there are a lot more stars here and many of them are interesting in their own right. There are roughly around 40 stars specifically that we're interested in, and although some of them do come really close to the black hole, some of them stay relatively far and are not really as affected by it. And one of the stars in this region, known as S85, has the longest um, orbital period. It orbits around the black hole every 4000 years or so, actually about 3800. Now, all of these stars are interesting to us, but specifically because we would like to know if there are also planets around them. And either the planets that were captured from the outside, or more interestingly, planets that came with these stars. Because we're pretty sure that almost all of these, if not all of these stars, were from other regions. They basically fell into this region because of the interaction with something else, like for example, with a partner that they might had, and maybe even another black hole. And all of these um, stars ended up being attracted to the black hole one way or another. But we know that um, about 32 of them are relatively young, about 8 are pretty old, possibly even 3 billion years old, and so many of them might possess planets, and many of them might even possess terrestrial planets. So this is something we would like to find out one day, which is why discovering this study from the Italian scientists was pretty exciting for me. Now it's still not entirely finished, they're still processing their data, but they already have a lot of initial results that show us what's most likely going to happen if these stars do have planets. So basically what these scientists did is use a relatively simple simulation, very, very complicated compared to what I'm using here, which is Universe Sandbox. Their simulation is known as AGRF code, and they essentially simulated um, the orbital parameters of various stars orbiting a black hole. So basically, let me help you visualize this. There is Sagittarius A star. Here is our sun uh, for comparison. And we're going to place a planet around our sun. Or actually, let's just place all of the solar system planets, including, of course, our beautiful planet Earth that's right here. Um, and we're going to see if any of them stay in orbit around the sun. Now, this sun um, orbits a little bit close to the Sagittarius A star compared to some of the other stars. But this will give you an idea of how basically nothing will stay in orbit around our sun. Everything instantly um, gets dislodged by the tidal forces of Sagittarius A star and becomes its own object. And so here, Sun is completely alone. None of the planets stuck to it. Now, that's possibly because the Sun that we have here is a little bit too close. If we were to place it maybe a little bit farther away, like somewhere right here, it might have a better chance to maintain some of the planets. As you can see, the planets um, like Uranus and Neptune didn't really stay with us, but we still have Saturn and Jupiter, it seems, at least for the time being. If we run this a little bit longer, we might see what happens with these orbits after. But a lot of these planets do get tidally disrupted. And eventually, you can see that even Saturn is losing its orbit slowly. So this is the effect of having tidal effects from a very, very massive, extremely gravitationally potent object like Sagittarius A star. 
And for this reason, the simulation was actually really long. It took them a pretty long time to um, run through this because they were simulating 40 different stars for roughly around 4,000 years of very realistic orbits. And they decided to do just this. They decided to place eight planets around these stars. Actually, I believe um, only the older stars got the eight planets. Okay, we lost Jupiter, we lost Saturn. And so only the more ancient stars, like S85, that's probably a few billion years old, were given old eight planets, because we think it takes a while for star systems to develop um, an actual planetary system. The younger stars, like the famous S2 that you see right here, were only given, um, well, essentially gas giants, only objects like uh, Jupiter, Uranus, and Saturn. And so once they ran the simulation and looked at the results, they were actually quite surprised to find out that pretty much all of the stars maintained at least one planet, specifically Mercury, because it's the closest. And just like in my simulation right here, you'll see that the terrestrial planets are actually not very difficult to keep, to maintain. So even the sun here will probably keep these planets for quite a while. Now the results you can see in the uh, paper in the description below, but it sort of looks like this. You can see that every object had their Mercury after 4,000 years. A lot of objects, about 72.5%, had Venus and Earth. And even Uranus, which is a pretty far away object, was still maintained around certain stars. Now, no Neptunes, but that's okay because these are pretty far. But the chance for having at least one or two terrestrial planets around the stars in the central region is now actually pretty high. So it seems that there is quite a lot of chance that if these stars came with planets and some of them were terrestrial, that some of these planets are still there and they're orbiting along with their star around the supermassive black hole. Which of course raises the next question. So what exactly would happen to these planets? What's going to be the effect of all of this radiation and all of these extremely powerful astrophysical jets coming from the black hole on the planets themselves, on the atmosphere, on any kind of materials on the surface? All of this would really need to be investigated and possibly simulated because it's very likely we're not going to be able to see this anytime soon. It would be extremely difficult for us to actually zoom into these stars. We just don't have a telescope that's big enough. We would have to build a telescope that's size of our solar system. But we do have really powerful computer simulations, including some really special supercomputers that could definitely simulate the effects of a typical supermassive black hole on the surface of a nearby planet. And this is something that I hope someone does in one of the future uh, studies because it would be super interesting to find out what happens to planets. And so anyway, that's really all I wanted to mention in this video. Once we discover more about the study and once we have more results, I'll make sure to do a follow-up video explaining, especially if there's something interesting that they discover. But for now, that's it. So now we uh, can kind of assume that there are planets orbiting around uh, stars very close to the supermassive black hole, simply because it's very likely that some of those stars had these planets, and simply because it's kind of difficult for them to lose planets like Mercury. And maybe one day we'll even get to see a typical planet passing in front of the star in this region, and then discover an exoplanet extremely close to the uh, supermassive black hole. For now though, that's really it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.